As avionics technician on the aircraft carrier, the job basically is to assist the air crew in any manner they may need prior to the launch. It's really an exhilarating feeling. Your blood's pumping. There's constantly something going on. I'm Scott Halt. I'm an avionics technician in the U.S. Navy. I work on F-14 fighter aircraft, both back at the ground station and also when we deploy on an aircraft carrier. Avionics is aviation electronics. I take care of the electrical aspect of the plane, keep maintenance on the wiring and the components that help the plane fly complete mission. It could be anything from radar to navigation, radio systems, communication systems, and a lot of the displays that help the pilot fly the plane to where he needs to and, and give him reference. Once they get in the plane and it's ready to go flying, you have to make sure everything is full mission capable, all the systems are working, everything is safe, and they can go out and do their job. What I enjoy most about being a physician assistant is that I can work in a wide number of patient settings. Today, I'm working as a volunteer here for the Columbia Triathlon. These folks are in really good shape and we don't anticipate any chronic medical problems. They're going to be pushing their bodies to the limit and I think we may have some cases of dehydration. What we're doing right now is we're just loading up some ice bags for the finishers as they come in in case they're in need of cooling off, which they probably are as the day is heating up. Did you take plenty of water when you were coming along? As much as you could. Great. When you come on over here, I'm just going to get you to lay down. Patients come to us from all directions. You can see we'll make some very quick decisions. What are you feeling? I feel kind of cold. Whoa. You got him? Great. Okay. Thanks. Can somebody get me some ice? Working in a situation like this calls for a lot of innovation and a lot of cooperation. Can we get an ID? I would encourage anyone who's interested in a career in medicine to participate as a volunteer as often as they can. Medical! Give another one! Volunteer help is really needed and can really make a big difference both for the patients, the healthcare providers, it can really help you decide what you're interested in. Right. Now take one of those pieces of tape and slide it right underneath here. I think that it's been a real rewarding career for me, and I choose it again in a minute. 175 or 66. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks very much. Good luck. The atomic bomb. It brought an end to World War II, but 17 years later. It almost brought about the start of World War III. This time, the focal point was Cuba. In the fall of 1962, the Soviet Union decided to put medium-range ballistic missiles into Cuba. Uh, the missiles from Cuba could have reached United States cities. Uh, it began with the United States saying, we can't live Literally, we can't live with the missiles in Cuba, so we've got to do something. So the Cuban Missile Crisis was the unfolding of the decision to do something and the, dis and the reaction of the Soviet Union to what the United States did and the reaction by the United States to what the Soviet Union did, all in a period of 13 days. And what the United States did was to order a naval blockade of the island. The Soviet Union had to decide whether to challenge the blockade or to back down. The U.S. would then have to decide how to respond to the Soviet strategy. The United States and the Soviet Union were like players in a game, each choosing a strategy and waiting to see how their choice of strategy fared against the other side's choice. Both sides also knew that their choice of strategies had consequences. In a simple matching game, the consequences are easily measured. But in other situations, the consequences can be hard to measure. 
For example, how would the United States measure the value of a successful blockade or the cost of an escalation that led to nuclear war? Glassmaking was America's first industry, born in the fledgling Jamestown colony in 1608. The pellet mixture is heated to about 2600 degrees Fahrenheit in the furnace. Molten hot glass is formed into bottles by compressed air. Some of the painters that work for my commercial painting company, they really like doing fine detail work, so they specialize in decorative finishing. You know what that is? It's where they simulate various types of building materials, but they do it using only paint and special application tools. You know, not all of the fine marble walls and columns that you see in public buildings are actually made of marble. Sometimes they're just painted to look that way. <laughs> 